which is how I came into this industry, which is that everybody brings their A-game for that moment because you know you don't have every second, you can't do a thousand takes, and it's, it's nothing's wasted, everyone's, you know, ready. The main one being thank you for coming. Um, this is my first film, so it's my first time on the merry-go-round of this time of year. It's insane. Mm -hmm. It's it literally insane how many screenings there are every single minute of every day. So the fact that you've found your way here on a Friday, just before Christmas, is incredibly meaningful. It's meaningful to a f small film anyway, just to have people see it um, the way it was intended to be seen. But uh, but this one is is really special, um, personally speaking, because it's for the Screen Actors Guild, mm -hmm. and um, that means that this is an audience of actors. And it's the first time that I've screened it here in Los Angeles. We were lucky enough to do one screening with the, with SAG in New York, which was extraordinary. But I think it's a different atmosphere that that happens when when it's so specific like this, because it's a room full of people who are part of this process. And I, as a director, have learned so much from the actors that I've worked with from the very beginning when I was doing plays um, onwards. It's the ultimate partnership really for me so uh, this is the sort of logical conclusion here we are seeing my film which is really a testament to the relationship i hope between a director and an actor um for for, for an audience of actors it's it's really meaningful um thank you for being here uh, we're going to do a q a afterwards uh so i i really hope that you're able to to stay and share your your feelings and and be part of that with us too, because every screening for me is an opportunity to learn. You know, we're small. We don't get a lot of these. Our, our theatrical run was was short because of, you know, everything is a financial, um, it's a financial game. But the important thing is um, to be here now uh, for you to see it. It was shot on film, so enjoy it. Project it the way it was supposed to be. And, uh, and we'll speak to you later. Thank you very much. It's a tough role. Yeah. Um, uh, it's an interesting question. I'm just thinking, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've ever read anything and thought it was intimidating. and I, I, That makes me sound like a real asshole. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe only because you connect to something from the inside out, don't you? In, in, in a way that... In a way that doesn't need to be articulated. So, I have been asked recently um, when you read this script were the differences between you and her daunting and and it's such an interesting question because the because the answer is i didn't see any mm. um and i think uh as actors you know we all identify with that it's, if something makes your heart sing as it did me this script then instantly you imagine life from that person's perspective um so firstly it was michael it was michael you know, bringing the script, and because I'd so enjoyed working with Mon Bloodline, um, and I and I'd been a bit confused about the television experience, where lots of different directors came in all the time, and he was my one, so like my north star, you know, because he was the showrunner, he he had this he had a compass of the narrative, and I understood, and I was very confused about the directors coming and leaving all the time. <laughs> I hadn't had a lot of experience in that, I had much more experience in film, and um, so I already felt like I had that relationship with him. I trusted him a great deal and I could see he was so connected to the story and then when I read it I realized that it was really a gift from the writer to his mother and he'd given her what she couldn't have in life and she never she never she never had in life and and if anything you know what what better reason to make cinema yeah you know if, if you can if it can be as powerful as that um so for those reasons i, I understand the writer uh, it's it's very autobiographical did you know that when you received the script yeah it, but also we also mapped out a life that was very much really very di very different to um the writer's mother's life and this is a version of her, but it's a sort of, uh, you know, a ghost a celebration of her, a love song to her in many ways. It's not it's not entirely her. It's a very different place in, in this country, in this vast country. We set it in Texas. We worked it from Lubbock. We, you know, mapped out her life, and that was a really satisfying experience. Um, yeah. 
and Allison, um, I'm curious, not only what drew you to the project, but seeing you with Stephen Root, this is the most brilliant casting. I, has this been, I was trying to think if you had worked together before, because it seems like you should have. I know, right? I, I used, I'm such a fan of his, and that was one of the things. I'm always such a fan of great ensemble work and anything I do, and and when um, I'm, I've been friends with um, Michael and, and his wife Mary for a long time, so when he brought me this and told me about Andrea and Stephen Root, and did, it was it just felt like the ensemble was what drew me to being part of this and um, the story, of course, which was beautiful. And I, I, I'm drawn to those things that feel the subject matter is close to me. I mean, I don't think everyone has someone in their life, someone like Leslie, someone that they they want for them what they don't want for themselves. And it just touched my heart. And I wanted to be part of <clears throat> telling that story, but I would have been, <clears throat> I would have been terrified of doing yeah. the playing, um, not you playing drunk, but that's that's hard. Like mm -hmm. For me, I would have been totally intimidated <clears throat> by that part of what you did, which was so just flawlessly, just it was just amazing what you you did physically. I didn't, there wasn't, you know, but I've I've played people had to be play drunk scenes before, and it's just one of those things where you there's it made me, it makes me so nervous because. Well, first of all, the time I had to do it was around people who were like, that's not how drunk people don't do that. <laughs> they don't do that. They don't walk like this is how they do it. So I felt so terrified to be. And seeing her just, she was so fluid on, mm -hmm. on, on being on set with her and watching her come out of that and just be now Michael. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, they were, she was such a, she was just a great mind about what she was doing and talking to Michael and they would talk about it and then she'd go back and do it. And it was just, it was, it was, it was amazing to watch, yeah. watch her on set. <clears throat> it was master class for me to watch not that i could ever do what she did but to, to that um to that actually just reminded me of a thing because we shot on film so in digital you know obviously when you shoot on digital you're not sort of racing against you know, the actual physical thing of cost and film and losing film it's a whole other element so you tend to leave the cameras rolling a bit longer and you but we were on film and we it was tiny film movie so every foot counted you know what i mean so we would say action right before we're about to start and then just cut right away unless obviously the the, the, the scene needed uh, you know pause uh, we would cut there was no sort of faffing around like sometimes you do and so my editor for about the first week chris would get the dailies in and he would just get the scenes pretty much that was all he would get there's not much else just the boom and he was convinced that that you were drinking. I mean, he was convinced. Wow. And it wasn't, wasn't until week two, he was going through the dailies, that he got a scene where I, I actually ran in in between and we kept it rolling for one time. And he saw Andrea, Andrea in, in a moment, like in the bar, looking like defocused and all this stuff. And then I was like, hold, hold. And he watched and she went, can I get my cup of tea? Just quick. Thank you, thank you. A quick sip of the cup of tea and then she's back. And he said, like, oh my God, she's not drunk. <laughs> It's a revelation. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I, with the depiction of uh, not just her drunkenness, but the alcoholism as a disease, is, it rings so true, as do all of these relationships. Where did you even begin in your preparation? <laughs> I don't think there's anyone in life who's not been touched by alcoholism. Yeah. Um, and the ripples of it are so vast, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, so... It's been one of the most satisfying, I'm going to the end rather than the beginning. That's fine. <laughs> um, it's been one of the most satisfying things to process the film after the fact with so, like, just hundreds of people who say, I've loved into that hole. I've, mm. I've, I've hoped and hoped and hoped there'd be change and there wasn't. Or, you know, I've, I've caused that kind of chaos. Um, so, so certainly there are things from my own life that I can draw from. But I don't think I, I don't think I'm alone. I think I'm probably with how many people are on the planet? Like six mm. and a half billion or <laughs> eight billion, whatever it is now at the minute. I, I do not stand alone in that. Um, so, so it's all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm just about to talk about somebody else's performance now. But do you know Bill Nye? Uh, oh, Bill Nye's yes. performance in Living, yes. which is amazing. I, when you see his performance in Living, you think oh, this is everything Bill the Sponge has ever taken in in life, and he's giving it back through his eyes. And in a sense, I think that's the best that we can do as, as, performance, as performers is, and, and as creatives is to absorb whatever we can and then, you know, yeah. spurt it out again in, mm -hmm. um, in some sort of eloquent way, hopefully. Uh, so it's, it's just, 
you know, things, things from your life, really. Is it ever hard on you, though? Because, first of all, you're making an independent movie. I'm sure you're working quickly and long hours. Um, and you're putting yourself in a mental place that probably isn't very pleasant. Do you sort of take your work home with you at the end of the day, or are you able to leave it on set? Um, certainly, yeah. It's psychologically really taxing. Before this, I made a movie called Please Baby Please. We were on a month of night shoot, two months of night shoots. Um, it's like an LGBTQ plus musical with no songs. <laughs> <laughs> Written in a beat poetry style <laughs> with Demi Moore. Mm -hmm. um, just, just, just the obvious. And then, <laughs> and then I shot this maybe two or three days out where I played Andrea Dworkin briefly and then quickly I, 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 there was a, yeah, something else. And then, I, and then I did this and then the, maybe five days after we finished, I started to shoot the David O. Russell movie Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I wasn't very well. I mean, by the time it came to Christmas, <laughs> I was maybe two days before Christmas and I was ordering food from my other half's Lebanese. So I was ordering food from Marouche for Christmas Day, you know, yeah. um, making sure the Labneau was there and <laughs> thinking, I'm insane. <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I, well, also, we shot this, um, as we know, on film, which makes it more complicated. But the whole film from start to finish was 19 days. That wow. was it. It's all we had. Yeah. So if you can imagine, you know, sometimes we were shooting 10 scenes a day and with daylight issues because we're always on location and Andrea is in every single frame of the movie almost, you know, certainly every scene of the film. So there was no there was no safe harbor for you. Once you were, there was no moment of like, okay, I'm just going to shut my eyes for an hour and a half. There was nothing. And that was a gift. It was a gift. It, you know, the immediacy of that and the immediacy of film, which is how I came into this industry, which is that everybody brings their A game for that moment because you know you don't have every second. You can't do a thousand takes and it's, it's nothing's wasted. Everyone's, you know, ready. That was, that was wonderful. And it was also, it's horrible to say in many ways, but looking back, I see now that it was wonderful making it in the height of the pandemic because... I was surrounded by people at the bottom of whose <laughs> their faces I had never met. <laughs> Just only only sort of here up I'd met uh, anybody who was involved in the production. And yet completely isolated and totally alone. I think that's very much how Leslie mm -hmm. feels every day of our life. You know, the way that a community both rejects and sort of reluctantly accepts her as part of the community. Um, so in a sense, that was also helpful, along with the, the, the fast pace. Yeah. Please tell me you did Matilda right after this, and just, or, or, or a rom-com in Hawaii or no, something. I didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> I, um, was, uh, no, no, after this was uh, Amsterdam. Was, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Lighthearted. Yeah, good. David Russell. Oh, yes, then after that, Matilda, yes. There you go. It was. Okay. It was. And then, and then a brief spell in, in Finland at minus 20 with the Scars Guards. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad. And that was... Um, Painfully cold. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, and Allison, you and your scenes with Andrea, you two are so fantastic. Uh, you, your character could be sort of a one note villain in many ways, and you imbue her with such humanity. Um, you really actually do feel her pain. And, and, you know, we've all had that person that just couldn't get their lives together. Um, how did you go about building this history between the two of you? Because you really do feel like this mother-daughter relationship for all the good and bad that entails. Um, I just, um, how did I go about building that? <laughs> did you know I, each other at all? No, oh. I, I didn't know Andrea at all. So it's sort of that job you have as an actor. You show up on set and you, we, we met working together so i just brought what i my what i brought to nancy and what i wanted to give her and um and just showed up on the day you know what i mean that's how that's what it was for me i'm just glad when i watched that scene between us at the end it didn't seem it didn't seem like on the page somehow it was like oh it's all tied up neatly but it didn't come off that way it was just a really lovely seen about someone taking ownership for her yeah. part and her alcoholism and going out. You know, I was, I was part of that. And I think um, uh, Dutch and uh, Nancy were big partiers and drinkers and, uh, you know, and created the environment that she grew up in too. So there was some responsibility there that she, or some accountability she felt like she wanted to, and seeing her, what she's done and how hard she struggled to get sober is something that she wanted to acknowledge, mm -hmm. I think, and it was. I thought it was. It was a 
one of my favorite scenes I got to do with Andrea because the others were mostly me just giving her, you know, side eye, and <laughs> beating up my husband. And <laughs> it's, you know. It couldn't have been more perfect because when there's somebody like Alison who you admire such a great deal as a, you know, in her work and, and in life anyway, <laughs> put in that dynamic, you know, Leslie so very much wants acceptance from your character. So that was a, that was a part of the <laughs> so that was part of the work I didn't have to do. <laughs> 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 and that was wonderful. Yeah. I just want to talk about the rest of this amazing cast because you know I referenced Stephen Root. I, maybe that was your brilliant idea to put them together. Um, but also Owen Teague is so fantastic, and Mark yeah. Maron. You guys have wonderful chemistry. I don't yeah. know why that surprises me, but it does. Yeah, they do. They do. They, so, um, Owen Teague is interesting. Well, first of all, Stephen Root is, has just been a long-time personal hero as an actor. Yeah. Uh, and I remember asking him to play it, and he read it and called me back and said, Can, I've never... A biker? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, do you have the right number? You know, yeah. <laughs> Do you think I can do it? She said it like that. It was so sweet because I said, you can do anything. You can, I genuinely believe that <laughs> any of you can do anything. I mean, that's, that's what you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, don't, you as actors don't live in typecasting. You live to play roles, right? And, and Stephen's the most truthful actor. Uh, and the wonderful thing about this cast, and Mark, as Mark totally is, is part of this, is you're, you're all, all like wonderfully you're all really clever and you're all really funny as well. And these are two sort of parts of things that even in a drama, you would describe this as a drama first and foremost, but humor is a huge part of how we communicate as people. It's massive. We ha all have a sense of irony. We all have a sense of like rueful kind of um, humor, uh, you know, a gallows humor or whatever it is. And the fact that you can all access that complicates moments which was what this whole film is about. At the beginning, I said it's about relationship with actors. I really believe that's what this film is. It's about looking at these moments that can be created between people. You know, so much history in, in, in just in your relationship in your scenes. But Owen, I was going to say really quickly, um, Owen, this is my favorite because, as I said, Andrew and I did Bloodline six years before we started shooting this. And Owen played Andrea's son, on Bloodline. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and there's even more to it because Owen, um, when we cast him on Bloodline, he was actually um, cast as a photo, um, like a, a photo model almost. We needed a picture on the wall of the Rayburn house of Ben Mendelsohn as a kid. And so they did a sort of open call kind of thing. And Owen was a high school student in Florida. And I don't know how much acting he'd done. But he looked just like Ben Mendelsohn as a kid. So he took a picture and put him on the wall. And then the next season, they started writing flashbacks. And they were like, we need to cast young Ben Mendelsohn. They said, well, we sort of did. Better call him. <laughs> Hope he's any good. you know. And Owen came as, I don't know how old he was, 16, something like that. He was brilliant. He was so wow. good that by the end of that, but within like three episodes of that, they had not only were they writing for the young Ben Mendelsohn, they were also writing for Ben Mendelsohn's child. And they, he played both characters mm. in the same season. And Andrew was his mother. And I should let you tell tell the if you know what I'm going to say because it yeah yes it was yes it was a, it was also a broken mother son relationship in many ways <laughs> but um, but I did see him as a kid and his mum was there on set because you know he, had, he was chaperoned and everything and he was very much a, a kid and he was so devoted so um, professional I mean you know he hadn't really done anything for uh, I just absolutely loved him and then we hadn't seen each other for six years and. That was exactly the amount of time that Leslie and her son hadn't seen each other for. Oh, wow. And so when I saw him again, his mum wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> he was a grown-up. He had his own flat in New York. Um, it was really, really moving. And one of the first moments that we had together was him seeing Leslie homeless. And I think that was hard for just passers-by as we were shooting that anyway. But... Um, it was, uh, it was it was a really profound moment, and um, I just I have so much love for him, and it, it, he's, he's an extraordinary actor, and, he's, and, and also seeing him blossom as an actor, it's just, he's now just, has, he's compassed this great talent he has. It's incredible. So, yeah. I know you shot this during the pandemic, so I don't know if there was any chance of doing any kind of a chemistry read, but how did you know that this relationship, that, uh, that you would have that chemistry with Mark Maron? 
Well, we, well, we didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> didn't in the sense that it, you know what it was like. It was the pandemic. Everyone was wearing a face shield and standing six feet apart. Yeah, there, there was no there was no ability to try it out. Yeah. It was just. Um, but I, as as a director, I hadn't actually know. Strangely, I didn't know Mark from his podcast, and I didn't know Mark mm. from his stand up. So I can just say it like that. I haven't seen Mark stand up, but I had seen him in a tiny movie called Sword of Trust yes. that, that, that that Lynn Shelton had directed, and he had this gorgeous monologue in that, mm. sitting in the back of a van, which broke my heart. And I, and he's not a sort of heartbreak kind of guy, right? Like he's got sort of a like a tough guy. God damn it! Like that's his sort of general attitude. Um, so when he broke my heart, I, I, I sat up and I thought, hang on a second. And he has also done a, a show called Marin which is like a Curb Your Enthusiasm sort of thing that's about him fictionalized. And he plays himself and he's brilliant mm -hmm. in it. He's brilliant in that show. And so those two things together, um, I just understood that it was going to work because that was exactly what I was looking for in Sweeney. Wow. Um, that, have you never seen Glow? <laughs> no. And I should, because I know it's really, really good, yeah. but... Um, but no, it's but it's one of my it's one of the million things that are nagging me to watch that every day. <laughs> um, have you seen The West Wing? Cause she, I have that. seen that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Once or twice. laughs> yeah, Mary, I've definitely seen The West Wing. It, similarly, I, I think I asked earlier if you and Stephen uh, had you ever met each other before this? I feel just like there's like this cool character actor club that you must yeah. hang out at. I knew I knew Stephen uh, socially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, through his wife Romy, and and I've had. I've had, we've thrown back a couple of martinis together, for, you know, fun d dinner out with uh, with um, friends, and uh, definitely I adore him, and yeah. of course loved him, and I've watched him, and everything. He's always, he's one of those guys that's in every single movie. He's yeah. Like, just like, oh my God. But so are you. That's why I can't believe we can work together. <laughs> well, I'm glad we finally got to be on screen together as bikers <laughs> my do rag and it's like, it, was, it, was, it was great it was fun um again because you were you know shooting under these extreme conditions and quickly which has its benefits what did end up being the most challenging scene or moment for you in the whole making of the film it's so hard to quantify i think because it always seems a bit like a blur doesn't it when you look mm -hmm. back um it's difficult to process it after the fact but um I do remember one day, it must say, for me, I was like pretty, pretty okay most times, even though we we're going through a great deal of material quite quickly. And then there was a one moment where I just had a total sort of internal meltdown. I don't know whether you remember that, Michael, you probably do, but we were in the motel and I was like, I don't know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was because words didn't make sense to me in my head anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just shot so much. We just shot so much. And um, Mark was so wonderful and so i think the th thing that mark brought to sweeney which was so beautiful was just he listened and he was open and he was uh, had so much empathy and he knows what it's like to to love that person that you can't save and he was playing a character who was trying to do it again in spite of himself and so mm -hmm. He gave me exactly that same kind of empathy when I was like, I don't know what I'm saying, Mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it lasted for about 20 minutes and then I had a cup of tea and I was fine. <laughs> Normally tea sorts me out. <laughs> You're a tea-aholic. <laughs> well, I want to remind everyone this movie is actually streaming everywhere right now. Please spread the word. It is such a special film. Thank you so much for being a great audience and thank you all so much for being here. Thank you.